Now, I was born at a very young age, and I took this game up at the age of about 11 or 12. And there's a lot of things I wish I knew back then that would have made my journey a lot easier. So I'm gonna tell you the things I wish I knew when I was a beginner. And the first one is that form is not linear. Your scores do not improve in a straightforward fashion. It goes up and down and up and down. But as long as that trend is trending upward going forward, you're improving. 135 yards, seven iron. Wow, these Tacomos are much easier to hit than the, the tailor-made burners I was playing. As a beginner golfer, you don't know what's gonna come out, but we just have to accept what does come out, take the good with the bad. Now, when I was a new player, I just wanted to bash the driver, but you know, the thing I wish someone had told me was, don't hit the thing so hard. You don't need to hit this thing that hard to make it fly that nicely. Learning to hit the driver with the lessons in the beginning of playing golf may be the most valuable thing I could have done and you could do as a new player, getting a lesson gonna help you to hit these really fun clubs. The lessons will teach you the fundamentals of impact position, how to take a divot, how to hit the ball airborne quickly and get you started and enjoying the game ASAP. Beautiful. Something else I wish I knew when I was a beginner was to play some very super game improvement irons such as these 101s from Tacoma or even super deep cavity backs from other manufacturers. This is just so much easier to get the ball in the air. People will tell you as a beginner now, you've got to get blades so that you can learn to hit the ball right out the sweet spot so you're not cheating. Man, cheat away. Get the easiest clubs you can possibly hit to make you enjoy this game and stick with it. You can upgrade to fancy clubs later. One of the things if I could go back to being a beginner would be to ignore all swing tips that are not pertaining specifically to me. I used to read Golf Digest and I would see stupid tips. I once saw Jack Nicklaus saying, if your thumbs don't go backwards, then you're not gonna be a pro golf or something. And that just sticks in your mind. And then you see other swing mechanics on how the swing works that doesn't apply to you. And then you start putting in your swing for no reason and you can't hit the golf ball. I would recommend not looking at any YouTube swing mechanics at all, zero, absolutely none. Then get yourself a coach who's gonna coach them to you and then for the rest of time, completely ignore everything else because it never applies to you. I wish I could go back and know that instead of trying to find the secret that's gonna make me hit the ball better in places that doesn't apply to me. Tacoma 101s, they're working. <laughs> On the green, man. One of the things I did do by default was practice a lot of short game, chipping and putting as a kid when I was 12, 13 years old because we weren't allowed on the course on weekends. This is where I ground out the short game and that's why the short game for me is pretty easy to come by. And then learning to strike the ball with a short game and hitting good putts actually filters back into the rest of your bag where you actually start to hit the ball a bit better. But in the beginning, as a beginner, you're gonna miss a lot of greens. So you wanna be able to chip and putt and pitch from anywhere because you're gonna find yourself in terrible positions that you have to escape from and you're gonna to have to have the short game to do it. There's something important I have to tell my beginner self, and that's not to get too upset at a shot and not throw my clubs, slam the club into the ground, or look in disbelief at the bad shot, because everybody you play with is expecting you to hit some bad shots as a beginner or a newer golfer. The thing you wanna do is keep a good attitude and be a pleasant playing partner. Everybody's gonna keep inviting you back to play because you're a pleasant person, because no one really cares how bad you are, they just care about if you have a bad attitude. Accept your station in life so far, it'll only get better from here. Well, I've got a hold of this thing now. I got the hang of the driver. Now I wish someone when I was a beginner had told me that golf is not a game of perfect. Golf is a game of missing and you have to improve your misses as you play more and more and that's how you reduce your score. Not about being perfect. Read Bob Rotella's book, Golf is Not a Game of Perfect. I promise it's gonna change your whole mindset on how this game works instead of trying to chase perfection. Now, all I want is something in play, not perfect shot. I'm not gonna get angry with a poor strike. As long as it gets closer to the hole, on the fairway, in play, in the rough, I'm okay. Seven iron from about 175. There we go, now we've got like a sandwich into the green. Say, if I could go back and be a beginner golfer again, I would use fewer clubs. 14 clubs in the bag for a new player is overkill. You don't need all of them. Use the ones that you love to hit. Can be anything, could be four, could be five. Use those. Okay, 55 yard, we're gonna go with a 56 degree. Wow, look at that spin. 
as a beginner, you're going to three and four putt quite a bit in the beginning. But I promise, if you practice your putting to a T in the ground to get that speed control right and start to learn about the slope, this is very uphill putt from that side. From this side, it would be a downhill putt. If you can learn how to gauge the slope and how much harder or softer to hit the ball, that's a huge step ahead as a beginner because most people don't take into account the slope. That's why you hit it so far past the hole on a downhill putt and then leave it short on the return putt back up the hill. Learn about slope on the greens. Take a putting lesson. Just can't get the ball to the hole. When I was a beginner golfer, no one ever told me, and I wish they had, that the 7,000 yard tees, 6,500 yard tees are for much more advanced golfers. When you're playing as a beginner, you want to play what they call the ladies tees if possible, and then maybe the seniors or the club tees generally trying to play at about 6,000 yards maximum. And if you can get to 5,500 yards, you're gonna have much more fun as a beginner. And by that, I mean the total length of the course. You can see it on the scorecard at the end column, it tells you the distance of the course. Not a grady, but a straighty. One of the biggest when you're a beginner golfer, once you can start getting that ball airborne four, five, six times out of 10, generally in the direction you want, you want to work out the distance that you're kind of hitting the ball most of the time. In 20 shots, what distance are you hitting that ball most of the time? What we want to do with that is plan our way around the golf course, staying away from hazards, clearing hazards, landing the ball in certain areas. But be careful not to over inflate the distance you're hitting the ball. One of the biggest ways we do that is we take a drive, we minus our remaining distance to the hole from the length of the hole but the scorecard tells you one distance. If they move those tees forward, if they move the pin to the front of the green, the hole can be 30, 40 yards shorter, and that approach shot is short, and you think you've hit a very big drive. The best way is to get a GPS watch that's gonna help you track all your distances to know for sure. We've got about 60 yards here. I'm gonna hit this 56 degree. Wow, it's got a lot of spin on it, huh? Beautiful. As a beginner, I wish someone had told me, don't take gimmies ever. Focus on holding these putts on the golf course and on the practice green inside two or three feet. If you get good inside two or three feet, you don't fear any putt because you can start putting them to a distance you're very confidential in getting in the hole. But as soon as you start taking gimmies, every time you have one of these putts, then they count for something with your friends or competitions. Ooh, you don't know how to do it, you miss them. Okay, let's go driver. Straight down the fairway. Man, I'd love to hit a power fader like that with my right-handed clubs, damn. As a new player, I really sympathize with you trying to find that little secret that's gonna get you there. But I have to tell you, and I wish people had told me this when I was a new golfer, it's getting the reps in. You don't realize it when you're doing it, like when I was practicing my short game, that that's what's honing the skill. There's no secret, there's no quick fix. It's get lessons, learn the fundamentals, practice your ass off. If you do that, you're going to be a great golfer. But if you go searching for the next shiny object and you get that shiny object syndrome, you're going to have a lot of trouble playing this game. Just enjoy it, have fun, chase the good shots. More good shots will come the more you get the reps in. And then remember, when you come to the course, don't bring those technical thoughts. Just try and score. Okay, we're going to hit a six hybrid here from probably, I don't know, 300 yards, 290. Okay, 160, we're hitting the four hybrid. Come on, man, we can get there with a really good strike. We're chasing that perfect strike like a real beginner does. Well, that is absolutely horrific. <laughs> okay, but let's do this. As a new player, I wish someone had told me to hit the same shot again to prove to yourself either it's the wrong shot or prove to yourself you can do it. Because sometimes you walk away from a shot like that thinking, man, I suck balls. And you might, do, you might suck balls at that actual shot. If I can pull the shot off, I can go into the future thinking about how to actually pull off the shot. So let's go less hard, more kind of even tempo. See, I actually, I actually have the shot. Look at that, on the green. So I actually have the shot, so I proved that to myself instead of walking away from here feeling like I suck. I proved to myself in the last one that I have that hybrid. Wow, I feel good now. Instead of bringing that negative death spiral, I bring a bit of positivity with me. 
And that can be your biggest friend because the negative death spiral, because you're not hitting perfect shots, is gonna kill your vibe. Don't worry, you'll hit a nice one. You've got like 120 more to go, so one of those will be nice. Oh, wow. I actually hit the middle of the club face. Just to the left of the green. I like to putt from the rough, and the reason is that I had people's dads always giving us tips on how to play, and you always get the best wisdom from the older players because they know they've been around the block a few times, and one of the best things you can do is just keep that ball low to the ground. That's why I always prefer to putt it instead of gaffing a chip, especially left-handed. Just hit it firm and get it on the green, get yourself a putt. Now let me try that with a sand wedge to see if that's going to be a better option. And that's a pretty good shot, maybe a little bit closer. So now I know because I've hit multiple balls, which one is better? Can I chip? Clearly I can. Okay, well that's not an up and down, but let's see, maybe this would have been an up and down. Yeah, there you go. Now in case this hasn't been established, I don't play left-handed, I'm a right-hander and I'm not amphibious. So this is not really how I play golf, and this is like my fourth or fifth time playing left-handed this year. And I wish someone had told me this when I was a beginner, play away from danger. Just play away as much as you can. You're gonna go in it sometimes, you just accept that. But if your intention is to play away from it, you're gonna have a much more fun time. So I'm gonna aim this way down the left side. And now I've laid it up in a fairway, like a bounce, and I'm gonna chip it on. Now when we're beginning, we wanna learn what to do. In general, we're gonna go with like a sand wedge and try to loft it onto the green. So I'll hit that first, and then we'll see how a pitching wedge works for like a lower pitch. Because sometimes that happens and you don't catch it all the way. Now if we try that same shot with a pitching wedge, and this is where hitting multiple shots in the same area can help you work out which shot is best, maybe we get a better result. We're using 10 degrees left, less loft, same shot, maybe we get up to the hole. And just like that we do. So you can use two different wedges in the same place and get two different results with the same shot. That's how it is to learn on the golf course. Let's see what the difference is between a sand wedge, which is a decent shot, bad result, versus a pitching wedge with the same swing. Look at that, I'm way up there. Let's see what's the difference. Well, that's a pretty good putt to about three feet. Well, we get it close to the hole and we take two putts. And that's also something to learn is that maybe you regret hitting a certain shot and you feel bad. Then when you hit the next shot and you actually see that potentially it's the same result. So if we hold this putt, it's the same result with both balls, which gives you a lot of confidence to know, okay, don't get so angry because it's the same result anyway. And there we go, it's the same result, two different shots, one we would be disappointed with and one we'd be very happy with. So instead of getting upset about it, we play two balls and we learn, hey, easy game.